answer that is no. I call that Groundhog Day. <laughs> so every year with Texas, the great fast star can they fend off everybody. Yeah. And Aaron Green was one of their targets. They did not get him. Also a target of Florida State, but Jimbo Fisher, even though there's a miss there, hasn't been too many misses in this recruiting class. They are the number four recruiting class overall. 17 verbal commitments, eight of them from the ESPNU 150. What do you think about the Knowles at this point? I think it's an outstanding class. Obviously, they've addressed the need at safety with some of the best safeties in there. James Wilder, young man who can obviously help them on offense or defense. What they're doing is they've reestablished Florida State as a prominent presence in the state of Florida. And from the moment Jimbo Fisher got that job, he has elevated Florida State back to what we remember in the 90s. And we talked about National Signing Day a year ago, comparing Jimbo Fisher and the closing job to what was done under Bobby Bowden. So you know Fisher can close. Is there enough to close on for Florida State to close the gap and be that number one recruiting class? Oh, sure, Lowell. There's plenty out there for Florida State to go after. And I think one guy that is in the mix and is a key guy is tight end Nick O'Leary, a great <coughs> pass-catching tight end. Can really add a great dynamic to your offense. And Florida State hasn't had that. It looked like maybe back in 2006 they had it with Brandon Warren. It didn't work out. But Nick O'Leary can add a weapon to this offense. He needs to develop as a blocker, but he's an excellent athlete. He's physical. He's tough. I think that a Florida State could add Nick O'Leary to this class. Not only helps him in the rankings, but it really helps him with their offense. And I'm going to go on the defensive side of the football with Tony Stewart because I believe from the linebacking position and from a leadership position on defense, Florida State needs to get back to having guys that scare the living daylights out of you. <laughs> and the rest of the players on the team look to as saying, this guy is an animal. We got to follow where this guy goes. A guy that has a Deion Sanders type of impact. Uh, you know, a Terrell Buckley type of impact. Uh, even Derek Brooks, who played the same position here as Tony Stewart. I think that's the type of leadership that Florida State has got to get back on that side of the football to enhance the demeanor. He's talking about that mentality, though. He told me he's just a big teddy bear. So maybe, we off, know. maybe off the field. Yeah, you don't want a piece of that on the field. So these are some of the prospects left on the board that Florida State is trying to close on. Corey, you take a look at this list and who's out there at this point. Are they getting closer to landing some of these prospects? Uh, yeah, I, I would say they're in good to great standing for Stuart O'Leary and Ray Drew, the, the same gentleman we mentioned for the Georgia class. He's located in Thomasville, Georgia. That's where Charlie Ward is from, their, their, their Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, and then you look further down. Timmy Jernigan has a great relationship with Odell Hagens, the Florida State defensive line coach. Jordan Presswood, who recently decommitted from Notre Dame, he's going to visit FSU on November 6th, the North Carolina game, and he's a very possible commit. And one guy that's not that list that you need to look out for is Aaron Lynch, another Notre Dame commit who's been up at the FSU campus many times from this summer until recently. That's someone that they're keeping an eye on. They're thinking maybe they could switch him over in the next few months. Corey, we can always count on you to keep us updated with that. Thank you very much. North Carolina.